we just we should just be wearing the mask and doing the basic stuff, washing our hands and all of that. Just until then, and even after then, this is my thing. Why why do we feel like it's so acceptable to share germs? Joey. Touching your eyes and you're touching your T-zone and all that stuff. Why? People forgot about that at this point. Viruses spread is when you touch your own mouth, nose, or eyes. You know, so yeah. how how important is, you know, those... Uh, what, the basics. What, the basics, like the non-pharmaceutical interventions. Like, how important is that still? And why should people still be concerned about that? And how do we defeat this narrative about, like, for instance, like, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day who literally told me masks don't work. Um, and, you know, but they'll still wear one because they have to, you know, whatever. And they're wearing like a cloth mask, whatever. All right, you just said that these nurses have to change all this gear, whatever. So wearing a mask is the bare minimum, right? Right. Uh, so if masks didn't work, why would hospitals for decades before COVID spend all this money on PPE? <laughs> you know, they could have saved a lot of money if they just cut up some t-shirts and put it around their mouth. But instead they got at least a three ply surgical mask or something. Right. So can you elaborate on that? Why 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 would masks be necessary pre-COVID in a hospital setting if masks don't work? So masks basically protect you from any respiratory illness. Mm -hmm. um, they protect you from flu, TB, SARS, you know, whatever you, whatever is floating around in the air, the mask is going to protect you from that. This is the dynamic, okay? It's really not that complicated. People make it really complicated. If I wear a mask, the odds of my germs getting to you are less than 1%. Okay, if I wear a mask and you don't have on a mask, the odds of my germs getting to you are less than 1%. Okay, if you wear a mask and I wear a mask, the odds of you getting germs from me is practically zero. Pretty close to this, like zero, 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 one. Okay, this is a good quality mask, not some gator or some BS like that. Like a good high quality mask, the risk of me catching something from you if we are both wearing a mask, it's practically zero. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have something and you're not wearing a mask and I'm wearing a mask, masks hold things in better than they keep things out. That's just that's just what it is. Even the really good quality masks like the N95 mask, they hold things in better than they keep things out. The reason it's called a 95 is because it's 95% effective at keeping things out, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so if I'm wearing a mask, an N95, the best quality mask, if you have TB or COVID or SARS or the flu, and you're just sitting there spread, you know, breathing it out into the environment, even with that mask, I'm going to have a 5% chance of getting those germs from you. Mm. Wow. But if you have on a mask, even if you have on a low quality mask, so let's say you just have on one of those regular surgical masks, masks that everybody wears, mm -hmm. you're going to drop your amount of that you're you're putting out tremendously. So you're going to be putting out way less. So that lessens my rest down to practically zero. If you're wearing a mask and I'm wearing it in 95, I'm not going to catch anything from you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And people right. make it way more complicated than it is but it, it's it's um the more people who wear them the more effective they are and people will say well i'm not sick why do i need to wear one part of the problem with covid and flu for that matter by the time you get symptoms you've already been contagious for about two days so you've already been giving it to people even before you knew you had it and um, the bad, like flu hits you like a ton of rocks. When you catch flu, once those symptoms hit, you know it's the flu. Your whole body hurts. You feel like crap warmed over. It's like a, it's like a cannon out the gates. You know you got hit by the flu, right? COVID's not like that for most people. Um, people who have like not great immune systems, some of them will get really sick out of the gates. But most people, it feels like a cold. Maybe a little achy, a little tired, no big deal. A little bit of sniffles, nothing major. A little bit of a headache, nothing dramatic. You feel like you've got 
just a regular cold or maybe it feels a lot like allergies because it causes a lot of sinus pressure, mostly like frontal sinus pressure, but it can cause sinus pressure here too. A lot of people think it's allergies or like their usual sinus infection is what it kind of feels like the first two or three days. So meanwhile, you're thinking, oh, it's just my allergies. You're not wearing a mask. You that you are massively transmitting COVID at this point because the levels are low before you get symptoms, even though you can spread them. But once you get symptoms and you're sneezing and coughing, you're spreading huge levels of virus into the air. Right. Now, by the time you realize it's COVID between day three and day five is usually when that's happens. That's when you're gonna lose your sense of taste and smell. That's when you're gonna start to get some shortness of breath. That's when those classic COVID symptoms kind of kick in. Mm -hmm. By then you've already given it to your entire family, your entire workforce, everybody you've been around, everybody on the bus, everybody on the plane, everybody on the train, if we were not making people wear masks. Mm -hmm. You've already given it to thousands of people before you even realize that you have it. Mm -hmm. And that's why the mask is so important. Honestly, I think the CDC made a misstep um, in saying that once you're vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask right. because there was never any evidence when they said that, that you couldn't transmit COVID even if you were vaccinated. And now we all know that you actually can transmit COVID even if you're vaccinated. So all of us really should be wearing masks until we either have effective treatment that is reliable. This stuff we have now, even the pill that's coming out, it's not great. You know, of course, the pharmaceutical company pumped it up. It's always 80%. But then when other people test it, it's more like 30%. Mm -hmm. So we don't really, we still don't have really great treatments for COVID that are readily available. We've got the antibody infusion with Regeneron. That's not accessible to everybody. Um, so we really don't have great treatment for it yet. So until we have really like a Tamiflu type treatment where it's just a pill and it's inexpensive and you can just get it, or the virus mutates itself out of being so toxic, which may be happening. Mm -hmm. um, we just we should just be wearing the mask and doing the basic stuff, washing our hands and all of that. Just until then, and even after then, this is my thing. Why why do we feel like it's so acceptable to share germs? Right. It's one of those things where up until COVID, we had between 30 and 50,000 people a year dying from flu. Every year, between 30 and 50,000. Really horrible year, you might get 100,000 flu deaths. Um, but most years, it's between 30 and 50,000 people die from the flu. Oh, let, let me, misinformation uh, uh, cliff note right here too, because I've had people tell me, you know, erroneously and in their arrogance, oh, this is just like the flu. You know, like 400, half a million people die from the flu every year or whatever. Total BS. That's total BS, right? That happened one time in 1918. 18, and, right. And it was 400 and something thousand, uh, not 500. And I'm going to let y'all, I'm going to let y'all hear it from a doctor, a medical doctor. Right. A, medical, a physician, not a chiropractor or somebody in these little videos, pretending like you know everything. What were the things that that in 1918 that people did to stop that uh, public health crisis? I'm gonna tell you something really cute. You talk about progress, right? You talk about we're growing as a society and getting smarter and better every day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, there's evidence that that's not true, right? So this is <laughs> this is the thing. So understand. So, so back then, the way the the Spanish flu went, it came out. A lot of people died out of the gates, okay? And part of why so many people died, um, one, flu is really contagious. Two, everybody got sick kind of all at once. And there was no room in the hospitals and there weren't enough doctors and nurses to take care of everybody. So a lot of the people who died of the flu back in 1918, if they'd had access to healthcare, probably wouldn't have died. They could have just had some support for a few days and been okay. But because they overwhelmed the hospital system, the death rate was probably at least twice as much as it would have been, right? Just because so many people got it all at once. When those initial deaths hit, the health department came out and instituted masking, social distancing, um, avoiding crowds, all of shut down businesses, the same things they did this time. But people listened. And so what happened with the flu in 1918, the initial, if you look at the deaths, most of those deaths were in the first two months. 
mm-hmm. of the outbreak. And then they gradually declined until they dissipated over the course of the outbreak. Now, flu is a little bit different than, than um, COVID in that flu is seasonal. It doesn't do well during the summer months. It, it doesn't like heat. Um, but most of them don't. There are some that do. But most flu viruses, they can't, they can't tolerate heat well. Um, so they die out in the summer. So yeah, they would have naturally kind of tailored off in by like May. It should you know go ahead and tail off. But back then it peaked in around November, December time frame, and then dropped steeply by by January, February time frame. So it was still cold, but they were able to squash it because people cooperated. Mm-hmm. This time, if you look at the data, it's the exact opposite. So we had the outbreak, they instituted all these all these mask mandates and everything, and the rates went up, but they sort of plateaued out. Mm-hmm. And then people stopped wanting to do it, and then the rates went, most of the deaths have happened after we all knew it was here, all understood that um, people were asking us to protect ourselves and wear masks and protect others. Most of the deaths occurred after everybody knew mm-hmm. because people won't cooperate. And, right. um, and the failure to cooperate and act as a unit is what's killing us with this thing. We never had a unified response where the whole nation said at once, we're not spreading this crap to everybody. We're gonna lock everything down for real. We're not gonna go places. We're not gonna have parties. If we have to go out, we're gonna wear masks and we're gonna make sure we don't spread this virus around so we can get rid of it. If we had done that in 2020, right. We wouldn't be where we are right now. Right, right, right. If we had, it, and also, you know, um, even even something like polio, right? Like when there was a vaccine for that, people were so scared so people were, of polio would have lined up. You. People would have fought you to get a polio vaccine. <laughs> 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 they, they were they were ready. Like they were, they were ready. Oh my god! Thank you. But now yeah. it's like wait, mm, you know, like everything. But you different. know. I, partly blame that on the way it was rolled out. Um, If you look at the public health campaign from back then with polio, like the advertising for it and everything, it was very well coordinated, very well organized. Um, Safety issues were openly discussed. And um, it was just, it was done by people who sort of do marketing, right? This time you had scientists trying to sell people on vaccines. Right. There has always been a disconnect between science and, and regular average people. There's a disconnect there. Like, why does the the, the person, like, that's been my gripe too. You know, somebody that's in the communication side of this is like, okay, this a doctor who's in charge of the CDC or this doctor who's in the NIH. Why are they always directly talking about these things? Like, And they shouldn't be. Why is there no spokesperson or somebody that's like, hey, you know what? You probably shouldn't say that. You right. Say that. It, they, this always should have been handled by people in advertising, communications, PR. Mm-hmm. That's who should have been handling the communication with the public. Doctors never should have been talking to the public about it because of the way we think. It's not normal the way we think. Right. Um, and so we can't communicate effectively to people who aren't scientists. Right. And so we always, should, well, most of us can't. Um, that's actually why I started my website because I have that sort of unique ability to do that. Um, but ev- most of us can't. We'll like, drop that link up- one more time. We'll go drop the link one more time. Right <laughs> you can't see it now, but it's gonna be there. Like, yeah, right there. you'll see it right there. Right, because I can I can translate, um, and and most doctors can't though. They talk up here, and people don't know what the hell they're talking about, and it's like, I, and then when people don't understand, they don't trust. Joey Cutler.